How are you doing? I've recorded and documented rocket launches in many different ways over the past six years. Obviously, the simple static tracking shot provides good context for a rocket's flight. However, I've also employed drones, launchpad mounted GoPros, and onboard cameras, which all respectively provide interesting perspectives throughout the flight of a rocket. However, one particular type of photo comes up time and time again when looking through orbital class rocket photography, and that's the famous long exposure shot. The goal for this video is to see if we can replicate these types of photos at the model scale. Just as a quick rundown on how long exposure shots work, the basic idea is that instead of trying to take a photo of one instance in time, the camera shutter is purposely left open for an extended period of time, capturing all the light information throughout a desired portion of the rocket's flight. The end effect is this really amazing streak of light across the sky, and sometimes you can even spot specific events in the rocket's flight, like the stage separation in this incredible photo by Trevor Mullman of Sierra 15. For context, an iPhone's shutter speed in a well-lit environment is approximately 1 8,000th of a second, but for some orbital-class rocket flights, the exposure time could be upwards of 3-4 to four minutes. Because of this, low-light conditions like dawn or dusk or even nighttime launches are ideal, since it allows the most detail to be pulled from the light emitted from the rocket and not the surrounding environment, since you'd have to set the aperture quite low to avoid blowing out your image. With all of this information in mind, we gathered our equipment and tried picking out the clearest available day with acceptable winds and clouds, and went out at sunset. Since I can't quite multitask the degree of piloting a drone, preparing and launching a rocket, filming said rocket, and organize the tracking shot, I had the help of the wonderful Isabel Lang who graciously lent her camera for this project. The camera in question is the Canon EOS 1500D, also known as the Rebel T7, a consumer level camera with all the high tech features we needed for this project. For instance, having instant cordless camera to phone transfers really helped us adjust the settings in between launches to try and nail the shot. For all the flights, the focus, exposure time, and aperture were manually adjusted. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. For all the flights, we actually had to lower the default exposure time on the camera since we were only capturing the first portion of the launch, since the rocket would reach a velocity of around 180 km an hour in a fraction of a second. For the first flight, the exposure time was set from 1 second to 0.5 seconds and the aperture slightly increased to account for the shorter exposure time and darker conditions. The camera was manually triggered at T-0 seconds, but unfortunately this was too late to capture the rocket and this was the image we captured from the first attempt just the aftermath of the launch with some smoke. Still quite cool, but not what we were after. So we set out for launch two. T minus 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Three, two, 
one, ignition. Deployment. And touchdown. Just gonna film the check there. Touchdown. For the second launch attempt, none of the camera settings were altered from the first flight. However, the shutter was triggered at T minus one second instead of at T seven. The resulting photo was definitely an improvement. However, the shutter was triggered slightly too early, resulting in a shot with the rocket still stationary on the pad and the exposure time was a little too short since not enough of the rocket's flight would be captured even if it were triggered at the right time. This photo was a huge help to understand what needed to be changed for the third and final launch attempt for the evening. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. I mean, don't have much time left. For this flight, based on what was learnt from the previous flight's photo, the exposure time was set to 0.7 seconds, and the shutter was triggered at T minus one second. The results speak for themselves. This project turned out so much more fun and rewarding than I expected, and the final photo definitely constitutes a long exposure model rocket shot comparable to the orbital class rocket photos you see online. Obviously this wouldn't have been possible without the skill and experience brought by Isabel for this project, so I thank her for all of her help. For the future, I definitely think it'd be worth attempting a photo at a greater distance, perhaps capturing some key flight events like Trevor Mormon's photo, but this certainly was an excellent start. Until next time, see ya!